Let's say you want to start uploading files to IPFS and streaming them through a dedicated gateway. You log into your Pinata account, you upload a file, you click on it, it goes through the gateway, everything works like it's supposed to. But what happens when you try to fetch a file that's not pinned to your account? It gets blocked. Why is that? And what do we have to do to change that? Hey everyone, my name is Steve. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use gateway access controls, which allow you to open your gateway so you can fetch any kind of file from IPFS. This kind of behavior is really ideal if you're trying to build something that's indexing data on IPFS, whether that's an NFT marketplace or DeFi protocol, lots of different use cases. In this tutorial, I'll show you the differences between a restricted gateway and an open gateway, and then get into the three different access controls you can use to open your gateway. So let's start with figuring out what does restricted or open gateways mean. So with Pinata dedicated gateways, a restricted gateway simply means the gateway can only fetch content that is pinned to the user's account. So if you upload a file, you'll be able to fetch that file through your gateway. And this is the default behavior that Pinata has set up for dedicated gateways. An open gateway means that the gateway can fetch outside of the user's account, meaning it can fetch any file from IPFS. So why gateway access controls? Why not just have the gateways completely open? Well, the reason is because any bad actor can actually take advantage of your gateway if you just leave it open with no restrictions. If they have the domain or subdomain of your gateway, they can use that to fetch any kind of file they want off of IPFS, use up a bunch of bandwidth and requests and stuff that you have to pay for. It's not really fair. It's not cool. That's why Pinata has built gateway access controls. They act as a extra layer of security. So you can still access files that are outside of your account, but only if you pass the security requirements. This means if a bad actor finds your gateway domain, they're not going to be able to use it because they're not going to be able to pass the security requirements. And with gateway access controls, there's three primary types. There's keys, host origins, and IP. IP addresses. These can be used in combination with each other. So as long as one access control is met, then the content will go through, allowing for very dynamic situations and different ways you can use access controls with your dedicated gateway. So with that, let's get into a short demo where I'll show you how these work and how you can use them too. All right, so I have a small replet here with a basic React app that has some examples of how we can use gateway access controls. So just off the bat, I have my gateway domain here. We have our pinned CID. And then we have a CID that is not pinned to us. And if we go to the Pinata account over here, you can see here is that gm.jpg file that is pinned. And here's our gateway. All right. So if I just put the gateway and I put the pinned CID, it comes through and it shows up in our app. Now, if I change this to not pinned, save it, Give a second to refresh here. You get to see that's going to break. And it's because that file is not pinned to my account and it breaks the default behavior, which is again, a secure restricted gateway, making sure that only content that's pinned to my account can go through. But if we want this content to come through, we want to fetch content that's on IPFS that is not pinned to our account. That is where gateway access controls come in. So the first one we're going to go over is gateway keys. We can make a new gateway key by going into our app and clicking on access controls here and then just clicking request key. And this is essentially gonna work exactly like an API key. I can copy it, view it, delete it, whatever I wanna do. So let's just go ahead and copy this here. And I will delete this one after we use it, so it's not gonna be much use. But we're gonna do const key equals, and just paste this in here, right? Now, in order to actually use this key, we have to add a little query param to our URL. So we're gonna do query, Pinata gateway token equals, and we'll just pass in that key there. All right. And there we go. This is the file that we weren't able to load before, but now we do. Now, gateway keys are probably the most secure and simplest way of using gateway access controls. The only downsides is that it is treated like a key secret. And so this is something you normally wouldn't want to put publicly in your URLs. Uh, so if it's client side, this may not work out well. Ideally, you want to use this in a server environment where the keys are secure and then passing the data to the client instead. So what if we do want to fetch the content via client side? Well, there is another access control we can use for that, and that is called host origins. And host origins basically uses the domain or hosted URL of your project and using browsers will be able to check if it is a match. 
And so to use this, I need to go ahead and grab the URL for my replit here. I'm just gonna copy that, paste it in, and set host origin. So now we take out this gateway key and then let's add one small thing to our image tag that make this work. It's going to be cross origin and it's going to be anonymous. There we go. And with this setup, if you have this cross origin tag to any of your media tags, such as video, images, audio, etc., it's going to allow you to stream files that are not pinned to your account, but show up on a client side without any kind of keys or permissions. Now, host origins can come in handy, but it should be noted they're not the most secure if you use them by themselves because host origins can be spoofed and it depends on the browser to determine if this is a good request or not. And on top of that, if you requested, you know, the content through a server environment, then it would still go through. And so if you just use host origins, not the most secure. The last gateway access control is IP address. It's a little hard for me to demonstrate how this one works in this tutorial, so I won't be going that far, but it's as simple as putting in either an IPv4 or IPv6 address. And this is ideal for server environments where you might have a static IP. It may not be ideal for where you're hosting your client content, such as Purcell or Netlify, because a lot of those have rotating or dynamic IPs. So in very particular scenarios, you can use this as another way of accessing content outside of your account. Again, it's not the most secure as compared to a gateway key. You may want to use it in combination with those. But again, the opposite is there if you want to use it. Well, that wraps up this video. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you wanted written documentation for what we went over today, there's a link down below for the docs on gateway access controls. If you felt like you still have questions or something was missing, please let us know. Leave a comment down below or shoot us an email at team at pinata.cloud. And also just let us know how you might use open gateways. How are you using Pinata in really creative ways to access content on IPFS? We want to hear about it. And until next time, happy pinning.